Okay. Hey, hey. Let's do this, everybody. Hey. Hi, everyone. Hi, y'all. <laughs> everybody, my little, little, how do y'all? <laughs> <laughs> do my little, start my little. Uh, ah, it just came yeah. up. There we go. Hi, Wait, everybody. I want to click on it. So, ah, that so I you just got your notification. Wait, I want to I want to open the chat up. Let me pop this sucker out. Okay, let me put it over I here. People, my goodness, we got eight people in here. Yay, that's more than I thought we'd have. Hey, hi Heather. Oh, we're gonna have and more. Janet I have a feeling. And Rachel and um Heather and wow. Janet and oh man, hey you all, my friends is here. Yeah, Good buddy. To Good to see you all. I, you, oh, I invited a whole bunch of people about two hours ago oh, to cool. come and do this with us in the coming weeks to come and, you know, do the chat. Oh, that's do awesome. that. like, welcome to the Lightworkers Roundtable. The whole I'm purpose here. of this show is to give you all a place to come to when you need your vibes raised. There you go. You know what? Uh, really We're going to really learn what everybody does. All of us who are in our in our um, reading modes and all that, it depletes your energy. It sucks you dry. But we're going to show you guys and tell you guys about what we do to recharge. That's it. That's it. There's a lot of different things we can do to recharge. And I've got a lineup like so far. Sherry's the first. I have Sienna metaphysical. Tonight, you know, physical. I have. Is she coming tonight? No, no, no. This oh. is every. Each person is one week, one person. So oh, this okay. is going to be an ongoing thing as long as we need it. Cool, awesome. The you know and then okay. next will be like EQ from. Oh, Soul I love Sisters. her. She's so sweet. I did. I a, got uh, it. I did a okay video today. I got an okay today that made me dance. Gabby's coming. Who? Freebird Spirit's coming. Oh, Debbie's going to be on. That's great. Yes. That's, I enjoy watching her. She she's she so delightful. reminds me of the 1960s hippie child. She is the 1960s. I know she is. Like but me. I mean, it's like she looks the part. Oh, she radiates you know? it. It Yeah, it just comes off of her and, and, and I love her. In, in waves. <laughs> and then, of course, Renee. We have to Thank have you, Heather. Sweet, wonderful Renee is going to be joining us. Oh, and Hi, Arlene. Arlene. Um, Arlene and is then Sonia. Rain. Sonia Rain Lee. Oh, yeah. Sonia's so sweet. And She's like me. Uh, she lives in the living room. She knows what it's like to have to come up with alternative walls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to, too. My, I used to take care of my mother, and I slept in a hide bed in the living room so that I could hear her at night. Right. Well, you know, I mean, we did too. The last uh, six, seven years before my mom passed, she had severe dementia. Mm -hmm. And as she got worse and worse and worse, it became harder and harder. I had first moved back to Louisiana to move in with her and help take care of her. And then my son got out of the Navy. He moved in and kind of like took over the day shift while I went to work. And mm -hmm. then my brother, uh, when his divorce was final, he and his son moved in. And so we all just kind of tag teamed it, you know, That's and cool. then after mama passed, you know, we kind of got to talking about it and it was like, well, we've been together this long and we haven't killed each other yet. So something must be going right. So we decided to stay together. It's cheaper. We split the cost of everything. There's always somebody around if you need help with something. So it makes a big difference having your family with you. Especially during lockdown, when lockdown hit us, it you know I knew a lot of people that were completely cut off from all of their family, and I was living with mine. So it was like, well, they're coming out my ears over here. So. <laughs> well, I gotta, I, be, I got abandoned by my family. They didn't check on me until COVID. Oh wow! I thought that was kind of odd. I'm surrounded by men, all the men reason, in the house, and two male dogs. Hey, I'd like that. I am surrounded by testosterone. <laughs> oh, that I'd like that. No, <laughs> no, my family just kind of, they decided to show up. I think, well, they showed up last Thanksgiving 
after After feeling guilty and all that. (laughs) Because I think they thought maybe she didn't survive and the house was vacant. (laughs) That's terrible. I know. No, I'm serious. uh, I'm I'm dead serious. Right after the lockdown happened, uh, a great aunt that I have in Houston, she got really bad and I had to start looking for family members that I hadn't talked to in decades. And um, I managed to connect to some of the right people, you know, to say, okay, look, y'all need to deal with this because I'm not in any position to do it. Not Mm -hmm. financially, not emotionally, not anything. I can't, I can't do it. I just buried my mom, you know, like I I can't handle this. And, Mm -hmm. um, and it just, it opened some doors. And one of my cousins that when we were kids and teenagers, we were really close and then kind of just lost contact over the years and we managed to reconnect. And uh, so he and his sister are, you know, they're, they're in Louisiana too. So that's nice. At least I got that connection put back yeah. in place. But, you so. know, family, when you've got a close family, that's everything. Yeah. But, you know, I kind of taken off on this shamanic journey. And really, that's a solitary journey. It is. It is. And I it's love fine with Danny me. I'm elated Carol, with Danny, I love to watch him when he does his... Sunday mornings. I oh, love I it. can't start I my Sundays Sunday. without Danny and Scott. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, every Sunday morning, Danny Scott. Yeah. I watch Autumn every day at noon, um, black and orange. That's, that's how I got into the tarot community, actually, was because I moderated for Autumn for two years every oh, single day. I'm a I'm a moderator now, but yeah, it's about four or five months ago. She, I'm still a moderator were, on there. I just she was having the trolls time. popping in and out one day, and she was like, "Is." there anybody in chat who would like to mod and i said hey i'll mod i'll, I'll do it for several others and yeah so i've been well, doing she that. had she was going through a phase where people with mods were coming in and going through and you know yeah i think so. they, but they, i started watching her when she was talking hands doing loaded celtics right and i didn't that was before i started so. she was already fully on by the time i started watching her but um, yeah, she hadn't showed her I face. She never Diane's, planned on it. <laughs> Diane's Tarot was the first one that I came across on YouTube. And I was like, political tarot? I didn't know such a thing existed. And uh, and I started watching her. And that led me to Linda G. And I started watching her. And then that led me to uh, Sheila Celtic Tarot. And then from there, it just like exploded, you know, it was, yeah, I, yeah, I started with Linda I D. Find. And, um, I started and with Linda started G watching, when she first started. I, uh, I started with Linda G watching her when she first started. Go, and so. then it was, after that, it was Marianne from Revealing Light Tarot, then Lena Rodriguez, yeah, yeah. Tarot Down Under. And then, oh, um, Lena is Dave Johnson. Dr. Lena is fantastic. I love that wonderful her. Dave Johnson. And yes, I between like those, it. they led me off into everywhere else. Yeah. And I like to um, watch Andre, the astrologist. Oh, Andre's wonderful. He's wonderful. He just he explains things in a way that I kind of understand because astrology is like gobbledygook to me. And I, I get the get basics. But you start talking the nodes and the triceps and the, I'm like, okay. yeah. And I'm like, yeah, okay. You it's lost a science, me. <laughs> guys. It is a complete science like biology. Zoology, Somebody asked me today, they were like, well, what sign are you? And I said, I'm a Gemini sun, an Aquarius moon and Aries rising. Rising. I said, I don't know what it means, but that's what I am. I said, that's why we get I'm along so air, well. Aries. So, uh, I'm an I'm Aquarius sun. A Gemini rising and a Leo moon. Oh, wow. So, see, that's why we clicked. We're yeah. Very similar. Yeah. Two of our signs are. My right. late husband was also a Gemini. It, we, we used to laugh. Oh, that's fun. We used to laugh and say, between the two of us, we had four people living together. Yeah, you're four people. Yeah. And that's pretty much what it was like. <laughs> My ex husband was born on the cusp between Gemini and Cancer. So, he, he was alone Gemini was Taurus. people. Yeah. He was Gemini and Taurus because he was May 25th and then I'm okay. June 3rd. So we would celebrate usually Memorial Day weekend, which yeah. come right between right. our birthdays. And so we would celebrate both of our birthdays together over Actually, Memorial that's Day one weekend. Of my birthdays. Memorial Day weekend is one of my birthdays. I oh, had yeah. my last chemo infusion oh, my on God. Memorial Day weekend, though Friday before Memorial Day weekend when I was had cancer. 
no, had no. cancer. It's gone now. It's, not it's all back. gone. I'm cancer free. It's, it's been gone for years. I mean, that was 2008. I've, I've been very fortunate. I've, I've tried to make sure that I check and keep up with that because I've had several family members that have all died from cancer, different kinds, yeah. but you know, they've all died from cancer. cancer. And it's like, so I've tried to make a point, you know, it's like I get regular mammograms and checkups and I see my regular doctor every six months for a wellness visit. I have a pain management doctor that I see for my back and my neck and to get my drugs. (laughs) You know, one thing that's good about a mastectomy, yeah, don't have to have a mammogram anymore. (laughs) Or wear a bra if you don't want to. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> but with this, yeah, no, I don't get away with that. No, I, I normally wear one. I don't have one on tonight, but yeah. it, yeah, that's my yeah. favorite part of it is like, I don't have to do the squish test no more. Oh, yes. I wish they need to come up with a better way to do that. They really yeah. do. You know, it you really isn't that bad. It's just come up with a better way. You don't see them putting men's testicles between two plates of glass. And no, and you also don't see when men have, um, the colonoscopy testicular cancer uh, and they oh, have yeah. to have an MRI. Yeah, I had cool. a breast MRI for breast cancer. You want to feel like a cow, go for it. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating because they have to adjust you. Oh yeah. Because so oh, yeah. you're laying on your belly hanging down. Yeah. And they want you hanging. So oh my God. Like Talk about invasive. If you're a shy person. Yeah. I'm not. Uh, once you have a baby. You kind of lose that, I think. I lost all sense of, of modesty yeah. after I had a kid. Well, it was yeah. like, okay, everybody's seen everything now. What the hell? You know, so. <laughs> I had I had breast cancer caused by birth control pills. Oh my god. I took them for I'm too pregnant long. on birth control pills. <laughs> too much estrogen caused my breast cancer. There's no history of breast yeah, cancer. I've in heard that. I've so, heard that, that can happen. So yeah, then that's a hard thing. And uh but yeah, that's uh, it can be pretty bad. But you were talking about we were talking about before we got started, and you were uh, yeah. the theme for tonight: how to pull yourself out of. This is our theme for this whole that. series, you guys: is oh, how okay. to pull yourself out of the. So my grandma, stop! My grandma is one of my yeah. guides. Okay, I have a grandmother that a late grandmother who was. Kentucky hillbilly healer. People oh came for miles and miles and miles for her healing. Yeah. My family barely acknowledges her. Yeah, she's my one of my guides right now. She came through in the go. last lion's well, gate. You can't so see her because one of my me. walls is up, covering she's it up. Been, yeah, you can't see her, but my mom is like just on the other side of one of the curtains here because uh, she wanted to be cremated. So we had her cremated, and then I bought two hand carved rosewood boxes uh urns and we split the ashes in half and one's for my brother and one was for me and so we have those sitting up on top of a bookshelf with a picture of her when she was young and uh oh, neat. and so mama's right there in the living room you know she people, looks out for us tattoo shops there's this thing having the ashes of your loved one put in your tattoo let me tell no. you right now, if you have <laughs> someone, a tattoo artist that is says they'll do that for I don't you, have any tattoo. you off, they can't do that. Yeah. It I don't. My son has shoes. lots of tattoos. He got the bug in the Navy. And he's got he's got, got one across his back. It's the tree of life. Oh, awesome. And it's like Go goes across the whole part of his upper back and then the stem down his spine. It's beautiful. It was done by the same tattoo guy that does Dog the Bounty Hunter. Oh, wow. He got it when he was in Hawaii. He was stationed at Pearl Harbor for okay. three years. And he was uh, in the Navy. So, yeah, he was a Navy guy. And, my uh, daddy was in the Navy. Yeah, my, my husband was in the Navy. My dad uh, one was of my at grandfathers Pearl was Harbor the, the day the, world, the war ended, World War II ended. My dad was at Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. He, 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 yeah. My dad never saw any action. He was on a medical ship. One of my oh, no, grandfathers my was, was in the my Navy. Dad was on an aircraft carrier. He yeah, one of mine was in the Navy, and he joined after Pearl Harbor happened. He joined the Navy, and he was in the Pacific Fleet. 
Um, and then my other grandfather was in the army and he was a little Cajun man. And since he spoke fluent Cajun French, they sent him to Europe so he could talk to the French people in yes. France. And he said it was funny because the Spanish people understood him better than the French people. <laughs> because Cajun French is a mixture of French and Spanish and yeah. um, uh, a few yeah. other things, you know. Yeah. And uh, so uh, and I remember him telling me once when I was little, yeah, the Spanish people understood me better. And then the French people would look at me and say, no, that's not how you say that. <laughs> and I thought it was silly until I lived in Phoenix. And two of my co-workers were both Hispanic. One was from Mexico heritage and the other was uh, from Cuba. Mm -hmm. And it would be funny because they would sit together and talk in Spanish to each other and they would be conversing going on. And then one of them would say something and the other one would like, what? And then they would be, they'd have to revert to English. I was going to say, that's when the Spanglish but, comes out. Exactly. They would have to go. I yeah. I live in Tucson. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I've heard it all now. Y'all both. You're like you in Phoenix. I'm in Tucson. I'm even closer to the border than Phoenix. You know. Well, <laughs> one, one of my buddies, his, uh, his family was all from Nogales. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. And I have friends from Agua Prieta, um, friends from San Luis. Okay. And those are all border towns. Uh, San Luis yeah. is just across from Yuma. When I first went to Phoenix, um, it's like the first weekend I was there, the, the person I went to stay with, I didn't know she was crazy at the time. <laughs> um, I mean, like, seriously crazy at the time. Um, she took me down to Mexico because I'd never been there. It was before you had to have a passport. Oh, yeah. To get in and out of Mexico. Back I haven't then, been just, down there since you've had to. Yeah, well, I don't even have a passport. I have faculty that look at me like I'm from another I don't planet. have a passport. They're like, you don't have a passport? I'm like, no. I'm going to get one this year, though. Just, well, you. just because I want it. Um, yeah. You never know. Might yeah. have to split this country in a hurry. You never know. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. But I'm at the first day. The, it's like, the bug in the back of my head a while. It's like, where where else can you go? I mean, everybody's effed up it's somewhere. It's a small world. Yeah. You know, might as well I'm just. definitely not going to travel with Mr. Musk <coughs> or those gentlemen to Mars. Um I would rather live on a planet that's pretty and I can breathe. That has water. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, I have a feeling anyway. that the, the younger generation coming up is gonna is gonna do some what for and with these guys, you know. They, are, they really are. They are I really I strongly feel that I, I mean you see it in people like AOC and and uh Cory Booker and you know some of the others that you just you see that fire in them. You know and what? they're kind of like the generation after us, you know, and they're where I'm and seeing it and younger than them that are like, they're not tolerating it. You know, where I'm seeing it, know. though, are in the little toddlers that have been born in the last two or three years. Wow. My one of my dearest friends has a little girl. She's two years old. That kid, I swear to you, she came out of her mother speaking in full adult sentences. Yeah. Yeah, my son was like that. He was always around adults. I mean, when he was three, he could hold an entire conversation with an adult and have them backing off, going, "Okay, whoa, he's over my well, head." It's like, you know, Daddy, I want you to come here now. I need you. He's two. Oh, I hear two you. Years old. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's it's. Speaking of children, I pulled uh, this card. For us, for the week, goddess card from I the Doreen Virtue Goddess. I like that. Yeah. This is the goddess Doreen. Look at the colors in this. I got such goosebumps. It's the color than my shirt. I'm wearing those colors. And it's it's Ukraine. It's blues and purples and and it's the blue of Ukraine. It is. It is. It is. Yeah. And it's the women and the children of Ukraine. I have been hearing ever since the possibility of all this going on in Ukraine, I hear in my head, you have to protect the children. You people need to start focusing on protecting the children. Protect. Yeah. Us adults don't matter, you guys. We yeah. have got this backwards. 
what are we doing to the kids? Yeah. And I don't I, want I mean, the kids of Ukraine. Look at the fighting in this country and yeah. the school boards and the teachers and the just watching the hearings for the new Supreme Court justice for the last yes. three days has been like I can't really? watch it. They make me so mad that I, I like yesterday. Door. Not yes. Was it yesterday? No, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. When the storm, we had a bad storm system that came through. It produced tornadoes in Texas and stuff. Yeah, uh, we got lucky. It kind of just blew over us. Um, but we wound up. All the schools got closed, so uh, we got a free day off. Um, and so I was able to kind of sit and watch it. <laughs> I don't really watch it at work. And uh, I was. There were several times I had to get up and leave the room. Because mm -hmm. I would get so angry at just the the stupidity of the comments, and the it ignorance. was it uh, was the it was the way that they would talk down to her, like she was especially when I watched Ted Cruz and Ted try to mansplain Cruz. to her about Ted critical Cruz. race theory. I was like, dude, you need to shut your mouth. You don't even know what you're talking about. I mean, you don't even know what critical race theory is, and they act like critical race theory is taught in high school. No, it's taught in latter years of secondary school. Yeah. Junior and seniors in high school, those are kids that are getting ready to go to college and enter into the workforce. They kind of need to know that stuff. So they're, they're, you know, well, they're, the, they're, the, they're the point well, they're is, all is little that adults. we should and all be taught gonna, all of our history, the good and the bad. Right. We're not I, perfect. We no don't race is perfect. From, no country is perfect. And we're not going to grow and develop mistakes. from that. We, we can't develop from, from that unless we talk about them. Yeah. I mean, if you don't talk about it and discuss why it was good, why it was bad, whatever, then how are you going to learn from it? How are you going to keep from making the same mistake again? Because a lot of these people don't think it was a mistake. That's the problem. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But yeah, this card. This is she's the she's the goddess of peace. I like and that. This is what I pulled for this week. This is on the bottom, and there are there is no need to worry as everything is working out beautifully. It's happening exactly as it's supposed to. I know it's shocking for us. Well, you know, but we're going to see more elected. shocking stuff. When, when Trump won the election in 2016, or when he stole the election in 2016, let me correct that. Um, he, I mean, I, I was physically ill for like a week. It was like, I just couldn't, it's like, this just isn't happening. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, okay, give the man a chance. You know, maybe he'll do some good. Who knows? And then after the first week went by and I realized, oh, my God, <laughs> it's going to be worse than we thought. And I started, but then I started thinking about it when I saw the reactions to it. And I thought, you know what? He's the best damn thing to happen to this country in 50 years because he woke people up. He had people sitting up and going, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Wait, people this had their head in the sand. This isn't us. This isn't how we behave. This isn't how we act. And then you had the other half of the country running with it, you know? So, um, yeah, Mama Bear, who hasn't he sued? Mama Bear. Yeah. Sued. Oh, yeah. He's suing Hillary. Hillary and several others now for accusing his campaign of working with Russia in 2016. Hmm. Like Considering that it's the that. truth, we've got proof of it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what's your proof? Could be the fact that all that money was cut off from Russia and now P P P Trump's scared to death. All these guys are freaking the hell out because their money got cut off. Yeah. So, but anyway, how do we raise these vibrations? How do we not focus on this shit? And because that's the only way I can describe it. Oh, yeah. There's some. It's... And lift it up. There are days I would make a sailor blush. <laughs> oh, hey. I'm a kid of a sailor. My dad would get embarrassed at my mouth. Yeah. My dad would get embarrassed at my jokes. But anyway, we won't go there. <laughs> but what do you do? What do you do, Sherry? When you're I, 
when if I'm really, really depressed, which doesn't happen very often, um, usually it's music for me. Okay. Like I said, I'll put on music from like the 60s and 70s, you know, my childhood, my teen years. It just makes me feel good. Um, mm -hmm. I'll watch a funny movie. I'll kick back and watch all the Avengers movies because at least the good guy wins in the end, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, because I, I love action movies. I like to watch that kind of stuff. Uh, or I'll sit and read a good book. Um, yes. You know, um, I have books that I've probably read a hundred times and I'll reread them again. It's like it's brand new just because it makes me happy. You know, it makes me feel good. Absolutely. Uh, I'm but, glad you brought up the book thing yeah. because I have one. It's in the chat. It's actually down in the description box that I'm recommending to everyone. At least read it. If you cannot read it for whatever reason, it's actually also a YouTube video. Now, oh, it was made as a lecture on a YouTube video. It's, I'm sure Sherry's probably heard of it before. It's called The Last Lecture by Randy Pausch, Professor Randy Pausch from Carnegie Mellon University. I think I've read that. The man was designed, was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And this is the printout of his speech of his lax lecture he gave to his students and co-workers to show them that dying is not. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did read them. that in college. I read that. It I took a lot of reading classes. for my master's degree. Yeah. Um, I, I took a lot of this psych book classes. changed my life changed my life it put everything in perspective your dreams as a child because he talks about he wanted to work for disney when he was a kid yeah and he ended up actually accidentally working for disney so it's fantastic and the lecture is even better than the book because you hear his emotion you hear his tones um it's about an hour, 45 minutes, hour, right around there, maybe close to two hours. I'll have to look it up. It's been that a way, long Oh, it's, I've it's read that in, I put the link in the description. Cool. Well, the I'm not only that, but you know, there are a lot of good books out there, and there's this thing called the public library. And you can go check out books, you can check out ebooks, you can check mm -hmm. out audiobooks. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of audiobooks through the public library. I was gonna say yeah. libraries are wonderful. Oh yeah, and if and they're all if, online like, now. Our library here in Lafayette, we have uh, libraries are being attacked left and right. Yes. By the far right, trying to get all of the, all of the uh, harmful, dangerous, leftist views out of the. Li it's like, excuse me, the whole point of a library is to read different views so you can make up your own mind. To research. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I pulled an oracle from my brand new deck I just got today. What is it? What we got? It's called Ritual. Yes. Yes. And it just seems to fit right now because it's Perfect. like we all have our own rituals that we do when we get in a funk to bring us up. Whether if it's music, whether if it's food, whether if it's a movie or a book, talking to a friend. We all have our own little ways. I mean, now you have people who are clinically depressed who psychologically or because of chemical imbalances, they require additional help yes. to get out of depression. Uh, my late husband was clinically depressed. So, yeah, I know all about that. <laughs> Uh, I used to be diagnosed with clinical depression. Yeah, it was when he would go into a funk, it was rough. I mean, we would literally, it would get to the point my son and I would literally have to drag him out of the house to get him into the sunlight because he would hole up in the bedroom in complete yeah. darkness. You know, I, like, no. that. I was yeah. like that for the first yeah. year I had fibromyalgia because I couldn't stand to be touched. It hurt to touch me. Yeah. So I just hid from everybody. Don't everybody wants to hug that. you, so, you know, and I'm a hugger. And I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't say, no, you can't touch me because yeah. I want you to touch me more than anything in the world. But it's hard and painful. 
So when we went into lockdown, I was like, hey, everybody, welcome to my world. Yeah. Touch each other. That was, I think, was the hardest thing was missing that physical contact with yeah. people, you know, because we're huggers, too. I mean. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was, I'm from Arizona. I was raised down here in the South. My family are from Oklahoma, Kentucky, and Southern in South Carolina. Oh, well, then you grew up hugging, too. So yeah. I, I grew up in Oregon, but I'm a Southern girl. Yeah. I'm all about y'all. Yeah. First and, time and, and guy heard, a guy up north heard me say y'all. He's like, where's the that's rest of like, your That's accent. like in the blood like, when you're born. You really want me to? Yeah, it's like, like in the blood when you're born. Like my aunt here. from Oklahoma. <laughs> you know? No. I... What I do when I get in my funk, like I said, I was um, diagnosed at 18 years old with clinical depression, mm. um, child of sexual abuse. And, oh, that makes yeah. it even harder. And that's that's what yeah. set it all up. Yeah. yeah. Um, and plus, I had grew up with a mom. God bless her. She was my best friend. But her mother was from the Victorian era. Yeah. Women were like children. You were quiet. You were silent. You were demure and you were beautiful. Yeah. Period. You were a piece of property that was owned. And, you and if you were anything other than that, or you voiced an opinion, or you were a little obnoxious and you were loud, or you made facial expressions like I don't, um, <laughs> you make facial expressions, you could end up in a mental, mental institution as a hysterical woman. Oh, yeah. Without so, a doubt. I was corrected every time I'd make a silly face. Um, yeah, I rejected it. <laughs> it just didn't fit. I don't fit in a box. So, but yeah, well, that, but, you know, my mom I get was in that black box, sheep. I get in that down. I first thing I do is take a step back and a really, I'm a singer. So a really deep breath that goes clear to the base of your diaphragm yep hold it for three to five full seconds so you feel mm -hmm. like you're going to explode because you can't hold it anymore and then yep. you let it out really really, really slow no you're going to feel like you're going to pass out because you get so much oxygen in doing that your yep. head goes Whoom! and there goes my vibes yeah. And then from that point on, I'll put on native flute music or which starts me into the meditation. I mode, love listening to Native American. Or TV. I'll find uh, belly dancing music so that oh, I can wiggle go. and loosen my hips. It's just, it depends on what part of my body feels tense and tight. I dance like Sonia Lee one day, Sonia Rain Lee was talking about dance when you feel like, and I'm like, girlfriend, that's what I did all morning long. I'm exhausted <laughs> because I was so down. That was the only way I could stay yeah. up was dancing all the day. Yeah. Well, it's like I will go outside, take my shoes and socks off and bury my toes in the dirt. Yeah. To sit there in a walk chair. In the grass. Nothing my feels feet better in the dirt. Than walking in, in the yeah, grass. Right on the grass. Just yeah. listening to the wind and the birds, you know. Yeah. I can hear cars from miles and miles <laughs> off, and I can hear people in the parks because I live between two really big parks. So they have a soccer yeah, tournament cool. every year at one yeah. of them, and so it's and it, they have a powwow, Native American powwow, and another one. So it's like I sit in my yard, and it's like oh, I love it here. Yeah, it's wonderful. Well, my son's a musician, so he'll play. He plays guitar and stuff, and uh, there you go. And a lot of times, you know, he he'll go sit out on the patio, and play. Yeah. And I know we've had neighbors, you know, come by and say, oh, "You're the guy where the music's coming from." And they're like, we enjoy listening to that. I said, "Well, at least nobody's complaining about it." You know, so. that's wonderful because he's raising their vibrations too. Yeah, exactly. That's wonderful. <laughs> yes, grounding is so important. Mentioning. This is my musical instrument I got during shutdown because I thought I would like to learn to play it. Uh oh, what is that? It's called, and I always do it wrong, it's called the kalimba. Oh, that's cool. It's a thumb organ. 
What, what uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire music had a lot of it in it. A lot of it in it. I don't know how to play a tune on it. I just, the sound is angelic. And all they got to do is just hear Wow, it. I like that. What culture is that from? $25 came with a case, came with, you know, stuff to tune it, stuff to play with it, a book on, you know, just the real basics of it. I just haven't That's had neat. the time. I the only musical anything. instrument I play is a stereo. And I'm very good at it. That, oh, I'm even better at the radio. <laughs> I can tune those stations right in, fix that balance and reverb, you know. Yes, me too. Yeah, the, uh, this, it wasn't. And it's that is really nice. Neat. What's it called again? A, a, a kalimba. K A L. Here, I'll show you that. Wait. Here's the book. Hey, I want to write it down. For kids and friends. Here's the book. K A K A L I M B A A L I M B A. Make music easy and fun. It's time to burn okay, your guitar so and ukulele. Of course, he may and already know what it is. Fall in love with the beautiful sound of a kalimba. That's cool. It's an African instrument. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. So um, I. I do Kindle Unlimited, so I got yeah. a bunch of the book, bunch of songbooks for this yeah. thing on there. I got to learn to play it now. I got. Uh, I mean, I, I'm. I, I mean, I, I like. Granted, probably rock and roll is my number one standard because that's just what I grew up with. But I love jazz. I love blues. I love classical. I love country. I was raised classical. I love, you know, um, it just depends on my mood what I want to listen to. Uh, yeah, that's me too. Um, my parents were very, oh, my dad spent like, this is like in the late 1960s. He spent $1,500 on a stereo system. That was a lot of money. Back that was then. a lot of money back then. Yeah. And it came with, um, that was a car. You could ever want. He, it came with boxes and boxes of albums too. Oh, wow. Um, which it better for that price. And so we had everything from Ray Conniff singers to uh, Fleur de Lis, you know, Beethoven, Mozart, all that. Yeah. So as a child, I grew up with all that. I took piano lessons. I was forced yeah. to take voice lessons. Um, I sung in choirs. Um, so music, yeah. um, musical. Trying to I've always learned. Music. Kind of fibromyalgia oh. fart here. Um, yeah. Like the musical resonance is yeah. Everything. I've always loved music. I don't say I don't play anything. I tried to play the piano when I was in high school. My mom even got me lessons, and it just it just didn't flow for me. You know, it was like I after about eight months, it was it was like okay, no. And then uh, I took a voice class in college uh, to try to learn to sing better, and I was. About halfway decent at it, I guess. And then when they did my neck surgery, uh, the my trachea and, and my esophagus and everything got damaged in the process. And you so, have one of those scars too, yeah, my love. Yeah, mine goes across my neck. Mine's right and, here. Um, yeah, uh, I and had it, a it's now I'm gravelly sounding. I'm, 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 if I don't take a sip of something to drink every few minutes, I start sounding like I've had a mouthful of rocks. So. Yeah, see, I'm um, mine from a car accident, C5, C6 herniated disc. I yeah. had a fusion there. I got titanium in my neck. Yeah, I do too. I got a steel rod and six screws. They they fuse four. Yeah. C4 Ooh, through C6. I don't have the rod and all that. I do have the screws. Yeah, they and took I out that surgery. They on fused C4 down to C7. They took out C5. Mm. They completely took the vertebrae out. Yeah. And they crushed it down and they put it what they called a spacer between okay. four and six. And then they hooked a rod to it and then put screws above and below to hold it in place. And then they put your crushed bone back in. Yeah. Yeah. In the yeah, space. I have cadaver between. bone. Yeah. They didn't use my bone. Yeah, I have um, cadaver bone. So uh, I can do, I can do this it. now, though. I can turn my head side to side. I couldn't yeah. do that before they did the surgery. I, I had a huge numb spot about this big on my thigh. Completely numb. I could stab it with a knife and not even feel it. Yeah. Because it was pinching that nerve in my neck. Yeah. And I lived that way for 10 years, and I didn't know it. 
Well, the car accident, I could, if I, the neurosurgeon told me if I would have been in another car accident and especially hit from behind, I would have been paralyzed from the neck down. I lived that way for 10 years <laughs> and had no idea. Um, the day I had the surgery, though, was the 6th of September, 2001. Yeah. So yes. guess who was really helpless on 9-11? Scared the crap out of me. And I live in Tucson. Tucson, we have a very large Air Force base here. Oh, with yeah. One of the largest airplane storage oh, facilities wow. in the world. You know they would hit here. Oh yeah. If I've always this was ever bombed, they would ever since I could make the decision, I've always chosen to live in a first strike zone. Simply because I figure if it gets to that point, I don't want to be here the day after. I don't want to help put it all back together. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to have to yeah, live if we're all gonna glow in the dark, I'll glow in the dark first. And Linda G was saying, um, she's got a bad hip. She was thinking if she was in Ukraine, what would she have done? As a grandma, what would she have done? Yeah. And she was saying she would stay behind and fight and send the young people out because the young people are the future. Yep. Us old people are done. Exactly. You know, we're not we got our wisdom to offer, but our time, our young time is we're yeah. Yeah. We're old. <laughs> oh, don't I know? Hey Dab, it's good to see you. <laughs> Yes, everyone. Yeah, You're like some course. really interesting people in my chat. I love it. I pulled another I... another oracle for us from the Moonology okay. deck. I love and, it. And uh, it says, uh, and then I'll pull a card from my so, deck. Surrender to the divine. Full moon. Aren't you talking about you not old dab? <laughs> Dude, I'm older than Stony. Well, I went to a physical therapist this afternoon, the first time in years, because I have to go through so many visits before the insurance will approve oh. me getting an MRI. And it's been 12 else. years since my last MRI. And yeah. both of my doctors are like, we need to do another one and see just how bad it's getting, you know. And uh, when I saw the physical therapist today and I was, we were talking, you know, what to do and how to do it. I said, yeah, I said, just before I got hurt, I had just started getting into weightlifting. I said, and I loved it. I was, he was like, you lifted weights? And I said, oh yeah, it was great. I loved it. And I said, cause I've always been strong, you know, I just can't jump and bop around, you know, with all the other stuff too much here, you know? Uh, <laughs> it's I too gotcha. painful. Yeah. It's, it's so I had discovered weightlifting and absolutely loved it. And then I got hurt. And every doctor kept telling me, oh, no, you can't do that anymore. And the physical therapist was like, we're going to work on this. He says, and I'll have you back in there. Maybe not lifting like real heavy weights, but lifting some smaller ones. And just just to get back in there and start doing it again. I'm like, oh, you're on. Yeah. <laughs> like, you do that, I'm a happy camper. You know, that and I'm waiting for the pool to open. <laughs> so I can go swim again. I love hey, Stoney movie. Baker. <laughs> You rang in Lurch's voice. Uh -oh. uh. <laughs> okay, I have, these are my cards, you guys, that I am making. Publishing. Yeah, I want to get a deck when they're ready. And um, so I'm going to pull a card for us. Yay. Right, these are my, this is my practice deck, so I apologize. They're little dinky things. They will be actual poker size cards, three by five. So they're easy to shuffle. I'm not doing. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Oracle size cards. Yes. I'm going to do cards that people can handle. I have That's what I like about my, I my hand here and, I, and I can't poker shuffle anymore. That's what I, I love about my Moonology Oracle deck is um, it's normal size. I can actually, you know, shuffle the things. Yeah. yeah no. And then I've got other ones that are, oh my God. Uh, my uh, Del Toro. My new ones that I just got, the the Psychic Development, new, the Psychic Development Oracle deck is what it's called. They're huge. Beautiful. Oh. And then there's my other, I'm really getting into the Oracle decks. And then the other Oracle deck I have is, uh, and I won this deck from Allie from Heart and Soul Connected. Mm -hmm. When she hit a certain number, she did a she did a giveaway 
And she put like everybody's name in a bowl. And then her husband came and drew names and he drew my name. And so I won uh, the Eternal Seekers Mm. Oracle deck. And they're fairly, fairly big too. Ooh. That one's the universe. That's a beautiful card. Uh, here's here's one called. This is one of my favorite ones. It's called. I am. Oh yes. If that's not that's the sacral chakra, or I mean the root chakra. Yeah. That's here. <laughs> here's my I am card. This is my I am card. Cool. Uh they oh, start with like chakra. Flower. I stock with chakra. Actually, that's the emblem for the shot that particular chakra, the root root chakra. This is the um here's another one. Sacral the, the, chakra, the, I feel traveler. cool. Oh, that's pretty. The artwork on with these a phoenix are in it. Just beautiful. Um, Those are gorgeous. I Oracle cards, cool. the artwork in Oracle cards there is it's so wonderful now. There are so many more compared to when I first started. Oh, oh for sure. And I've heard a lot of people say that, you know, the, the choices. The, the, order oh, the new deck. Gosh. Yes, if oh. you just bought the decks from Colette Baron Reed, the artwork is amazing. Like this one yeah. that I got here for us for tonight. It's the Shamanic Dreams. Um, here's one. Here, there you go. The artwork's just fantastic. Wow, I like that. Um, that's cool. This Colette Baron Reed. Here's another one. This is. I love the ones with. What I pulled work. yesterday. The first two decks I had were from Cardomancy, um, from you know one of the one of the Chad people. Yeah, um, I know. When I first finally spoke out and said hello, people. I'm here. Um, and uh, and she was chatting with me in the chat, and she was like, "Well, do you have a tarot deck?" And I'm like, "No." I was thinking about going and buying one, I guess. She says, no, send me your address. I'll send you one. And she sent me two tarot decks. Awesome. And, oh, she's um, fantastic. I love yeah. her. She is so sweet. And um, this card. Feast of Plenty. Oh, Look at wow. all this stuff. There's a bee. There's the crystals. Look at the grape leaf. There's a lemon. Look at all the light. It's just like... To read these things intuitively, this is why I use them. I use this deck every Saturday in my Saturday solutions. This oh. is the dreams. This is position number two. I use it for our dreams and goals. Okay. So we start okay. out with where we are currently. Yeah. And then we look at our dreams and goals. And then I use same um, Colette Baron Reed, her enchanted map deck. For the map on how to get from where we are to where we want to be. And then I okay. pull the chakra card. See, and I'm learning. I mean, I'm still learning the cards. And uh, I've been, like, pulling for myself every That's, day. You know, and, just at first yeah. it was like one oracle card and one tarot card. Well, I'm still pulling one or two oracle cards now that I've got more than one deck. Um and then I've just started doing like the three card spread I was gonna say, and then trying to, and then trying to, you know, once I flip them over and then look at them and say, okay, what, what is the story with this? What is, what are these three trying to tell me? And so I'm, I'm teaching myself how to do that. You know, what and I mean? earlier today when I first got home and uh, my son had come in and checked the camera because it wasn't doing right earlier and uh, we went out to go grab a smoke on the patio um, before we went on air. And I said, I made a comment about, well, I just hope I don't sound stupid, you know, or something. No he's way. like, mom, he's like, mom, he says, yeah. just be you. We he love says, you. Who cares? We all know you. He says about the card. He says, look at the card and just tell it what you think. Honey. First and of I'm all, like, you're right. You're absolutely right. It's so. you. It's your interpretation, and there's no right or wrong. Exactly. I just and need especially somebody with to, Oracle cards. I needed to hear it from him, who's not into this at all. You know. And that's wonderful. He told you that. You got the coolest son, though. He's. <laughs> I am very proud of him. He's a really. Oh, his artwork is amazing. 
Yeah, it is. It, it just blows my mind. How By the is. way, your picture, your avatar, is that his drawing? No, that was actually off of an app on, uh, uh, I got off of uh, Amazon or whatever it was. I don't know. It was uh, called Tune Me. It's like you just show, you take a picture oh, okay, of I've seen it. Yeah. and then you load it into the app and then it'll give you like 10 or 11 or 12 different cartoon versions of it of your Sorry. picture and i saw that one and i thought oh i like that one that makes me look younger so i picked <laughs> <one>. <laughs> like i do i'll pick the one with the blonder hair because i used to be really blonde till all my hair fell out from chemo um now the blondness is white so but it comes out i was a dark and i've had these most of these blonde these white streaks i've had since i was 28 years old and i started getting before. gray when i was 12 everybody in my family premature gray early when yeah. i was 12 i was plucking gray hair out of my head I come um, from a but i had dark and... brown hair yeah i come from all my life and heads. then when it started turning gray i started coloring it and i colored it for years and years and years and years so I. and then it quit taking color it's like the the brown that was still in it would turn whatever color that i i put in it and they right would do the initial rinse out, the white would be white. And then about a year ago, hair. my white started turning blonde. So now I'm turning into a blonde. I'm like, all my life I wanted to be a blonde. It took till I was 60 to get there. So <laughs> you know, and I didn't have I to put, bleach my hair to do it. So I pull my hair back here so you can see my this is a birthmark. There's no color in that hair, it won't take color either. Yeah. Yeah, my uh, I had platinum. I had a platinum blonde pixie with bangs and the whole bit. Everything had that just a little bit of a yellow pin, tint to it, you know, the blonde look. Yeah. Except for there, no color, Snow White. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we tried dyeing it green. I've tried dyeing it purple. I've <laughs> we'll take it. No, well, there you go. It's just an angel. Angel. Wait, here's an AKA Spike from the Gremlins. Oh, Spike the Gremlins. <laughs> I was saying it was an angel streak. So Stony would say I was a Gremlin. He knows me pretty well. <laughs> One of my grower buddies. Okay, what do we have for a card from my deck? Let's see what we got. Here. Let's see what we got. Ooh, Kidoki. Let's this see. This is the card. And it's telling Ooh. us we have we tools, tools to bring our vibrations up. Oh, tools. Use your tools. There you go. I like that. There's, like I said, I apologize. They're so small, but there's tarot cards. There's a pendulum. There's the moon. There's, you know, a crystal. Whatever tools that you use, whether it's music or whatever, use your tools. There you go. These cards are black. Definitely my eternal seeker oracle cards. I'm going to pull one more for, for all of us. Since we're coming up on the hour here. So, clarity. Oh, I like that. I like that. The yoga pose. You know what? I prayed for clarity. I asked for clarity. I begged for clarity when we went into shutdown. Hawks started coming and hanging out on my bird bath. So wow. I decided, wow, there's a message in that somewhere. Uh, I mean, every day, hanging out. Several times a day, just hanging there. And they'd watch the rabbits playing and stuff. And the rabbits didn't care that the hawk was there. And the hawk wasn't even interested in the rabbits. Wow. A hummingbird buzzed it once, buzzed this hawk one time. And the hawk was like, seriously, really? Looking at the hummingbird like, come well, on, give me a break. They have been showing up at our place about a month ago. This beautiful eagle came soaring through, like right in front of my patio. And I was like, oh, my God, that was an eagle. I mean, it was just magnificent. And then a couple of days later, here he comes again with his mate. Yes. And come soaring through. And I've spotted them a few times, but they've never come back down close enough like they did that first time. Because every time I see them, I grab my phone thinking, I'm going to try to get a picture so people will believe me. And... um but they're gorgeous to watch fly. I never really watched one in person. I never really seen any. They're lazy. And uh, it was like, wow, that was, that's really. You know what, Dab? 
Yes, a hawk is a messenger of direction on the path. It also, hawk is the ultimate clarity of vision. In, yeah. <laughs> in er, them and the owl, because the owl can turn his head completely around. They yeah. see perfectly at night, but the hawk sees perfectly from miles in the air. Yeah, you can see a little mouse moving down in that grass, yeah. and. Rachel, I love it. Rachel's talking about black tourmaline. There you go. That's what I got on my table. Black I'm sure one of these is a black tourmaline in here, but I don't know which one. Um, I got this because it does not have a maybe this little... one. Yeah. Where's has... Jen when you need her? Huh? No, way this thing works, man. Stick it in your bra when you're having a I like tough this day one. I don't works. know what it is, but it's green and it's really pretty. I like it. Looks like adventuring, like this guy. It could be, yeah. This guy right here. Uh, yeah, it looks very much like that. Very much like that. This is and my favorite. One. This was at Sac. Like I said, the two of the decks that I got from Etsy. Um, this I got my favorite from, green stone. Um, this is my favorite like green stone. It occurs <laughs> naturally all over in Arizona. So look at malachite. That. Yeah, Arizona's a rock hounds. Uh, yeah, that's why we have the huge gem show here is because Arizona is a mecca oh, yeah. for rock oh, hounds. Yeah. There's so many cool Living rocks Phoenix here for ten years. So yeah, we um, used to go to Quartzsite all the time and go go find rocks. I can remember when the gem show was nothing but just a bunch of guys with with a rock tumbler and slicers, and you could go and buy you know stuff from individual rock hounds. And it was just a group of guys. Yeah. And now it's the whole world comes here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's amazing. Exactly. Um, you can literally feel the energy in the city change as these stones, these massive. I saw pictures here. that Jen took, Jen from Jen's world to row. She went down to the, to the. The year rock before rock. shutdown, uh, 2019, they had an amethyst. Uh, and I always get it confused which is stalactite and which is stalagmite. Anyway, and it you know, amethyst on the inside. It oh, had <laughs> it was huge. I mean, it was like seven foot tall. Wow. It was sliced, it had angle iron, welded angle iron framework that you could lay down in or sit on. My and close the slice around you so you were sitting in the center of the geode. Oh, that's cool. I have that's never cool. experienced uh, amethyst is my birthstone. That is a major healing oh, birthstone. And to be completely immersed in amethyst. I love amethyst. That thing, that particular stone was like $30,000. Yeah, I can believe it. But that it worked for a wholesale jewelry uh, manufacturer. The whole city. And we got to go in and look at Jim's. Um, I saw some diamonds big enough to choke a horse that were. Oh, yeah. And the price of this. I have. Unbelievably. I, I think the prettiest pearl I've ever seen in my life was one that we had. And it was about this big around. Mm. And it was black. It was a black mm, I love tin pearl. Tahitian black pearls. Mm. Mm. And it was wholesale. Mm. It was like fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. I'd hate to think even what it would cost. Well, when I'm quoting the price, it would store. be wholesale too, because I have a wholesale license to sell my artwork. You know, sell my oh, paintings. There you go. Yeah. So I can get into all those wholesale. At the gym mm, show, yeah. which everybody goes, oh, goody, we, Katie can get us in for the good deals. But except there's a problem. I get wholesale tax exempt until I resell it. They want their taxes eventually. Yep. yep. So they trace you. They follow you. Oh, Expect yeah. To sell that. So, no, I don't get good deals yeah. for other people. If you, <laughs> if you give it away, then you're fine. But if you sell it. Yeah. 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 So. Um, yep. I drew one more. Yes. Shadows. Ooh. He's embracing the dragon there. And I'm looking at that eye on that dragon. Is that awesome looking or what? 
That's not an angry eye either. No. No, it's not. So it's almost like that dragon is leaning his head and into him. And if you look him. closely at the mouth, I don't know if you can see it in this light, it's almost grinning. Yeah, it's leaning into him. Yeah. Yeah, it's... it's. it's He's embracing his him. shadow work. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. That's another way to, I hate to say this, but there is a time when you're an empath, there will come times. Well, you will go through a period called the dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. And no matter what music you listen to, no matter what you do, it's really almost impossible to raise those vibrations back up again. Yeah. And it's because what you're needing to do is you're needing to work on those things that have been triggering you for years that you're going, no, I don't want to look at it. It's so yeah, awful. Yeah. Oh, I don't want you Allie have did a to series. work them. Ali did a series on shadow work, mirror work, um, not that long ago. Uh, I watched a couple of them. I haven't been able to finish the whole thing. Uh, I did a couple of of Ali because of uh, me a couple of times. Yeah, well, this was accident. like a series she got in a car of, accident uh, or her fender bender. Yeah, this was like a series of uh, videos she did on uh, on shadow work. I don't think she interviewed anybody in them. At least the episode I saw, she didn't. Okay. Yeah, um, no, what I did was the resilience, the yeah. resilience, and then I did a ripping with her way back when I first started my channel. God, that was back in July. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, she was the first oh. one to ask me to come on and and, and do your a ripping channel, my love, is new. What can we do to help support you, my sweet? I want Wait. to help you grow your channel. What can we do? Uh, what do you got planned for your channel? What are your ideas? My idea? Well, and see, that's where I'm still kind of playing around with it. Um, I want to. And I you don't have to tell anything you don't want to. That's cool. Yeah, no, no. I mean, it's just, it's like, I kind of know in my head kind of what I want to do. But I'm having a hard time expressing what I want to do mm -hmm. um, just because it hasn't crystallized for me yet. But I it's gotcha. like I, I, I want to be able to help people. I want to be able to, um, <clears throat> if someone comes to me, you know, and says, you know, I have this issue, I have this problem, I have this question, um, can you help me with it? You know, at least be able to be in tune enough to, to, to either pull out the cards or just intuit an answer or do one of my um, pendulums and just kind of help them figure out what direction. Yes. You know, to help them with that. And that's basically, I've had several people tell me I was an empath. So, um, oh, you are. I was like, so, you you are. Like, so I'm not really quite sure what to do with that because. I don't really know how to do that. So um, I would suggest, you know, start re watching some videos about empaths and what is an empath and the different kinds of empaths yeah. so that yeah. you can recognize where, what, niche, what is, are you? Do you, right. are you, what kind of clairvoyance do you have? Because do you, there's clairvoyance where you hear plants, where you hear animals, where you hear people, where you yeah. hear, I don't really hear anything. Um, I just feel. I just, it's like I'll just know something. Oh, you've got the knowing. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, uh, my grandmother now. used to tell me that I had the deja vu because mm -hmm. I would walk into a room or, or go somewhere we had never been before. And I would walk in and go, Oh, I've been here before. And everybody would be like, No, we've never been here before. I'd be, Oh, yeah, I've been here before. And I could tell them where everything was. In whose room it was and what was in that room, and don't know how I did it, but that, yeah. And then when I was about 11 or 12, I started having out of body experiences. And I didn't know what it was, I just knew I could lay in bed flat on my back and just kind of close my eyes and just. The first time it happened, it kind of freaked me out. I, I didn't know what was going on. And then after the first time, I thought, that was kind of cool. 
let me try it again. And I would just lay there and I could feel myself float to the ceiling and look down on myself. And then I would come right back in because I would be, I would freak out scared that I'd float away. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't and be able to know, come back in. I didn't know who to talk to about it. You know, it just, yes. um, it just wasn't discussed back then, you know. No, kind of thing. Was going in, and yeah. if you said you had out of body experiences, they would think you were possessed. Oh my god, they probably would have put me in a rubber room. You and I were both raised the same way. We both raised in them them Baptist households. Yeah. <laughs> well, my mother wasn't though. She was the rebel of the No, neither was my she mom. Was, she was a single parent who raised two kids by herself in the 60s. You know, wow. my so, mom was um my mother never decided what church she wanted to go to until she was in her 80s. My mother never. She didn't church. think any of them fit her. And it's funny because yeah. I'm definitely her kid. Yeah. She was never, she never went. She had her own beliefs. She pretty much kept to herself. Um, mm -hmm. She pretty much was with my brother and I. It was like, you know, if go and, and, you know, if you feel the urge to go here, go there, go check it out and, that's the way I was raised too. You know, so it was like do your own thing. Um, she never forced any beliefs on us. She always kind of I never did up. either, as long as they were Christian oriented. Oh, she didn't even care about that. She was she literally my dad never cared about that because he grew up in a very Baptist household. Yeah. My mother, it was just because it was a respectable thing to do, and that's how she got along with yeah. her in-laws because my dad's family very strong fundamentalist Southern Baptist. Oh, I, mean, I, know. I was in that cult for several years. I know, you know, the speaking in tongues and all that stuff. Yeah. I grew up in that. I, I had a, um, when my son was little, uh, he, we lived next door to uh, a lady who was from like way deep in the country, you know, kind of hillbilly type, even yeah. though there were no hills around here. <laughs> from the swamps, I guess, uh, come to find out she was a, a treater, which is a Cajun medicine woman. Cool. And she, my son had uh, never really been sick in his whole life, not seriously. You know, you could count on one hand the times he ever was seriously sick. And he was complaining one afternoon, I don't feel good, I don't feel good, and you know, we went to check and he kept rubbing his ear, saying his ear was hurting, his ear was hurting. He was running. You could feel the heat coming off of him. Aww. And so we were like, okay, we need to go to the emergency room, find out what's wrong. And so while we're like trying to put things together to go, uh, the lady next door, she came and knocked on the door. Can I borrow a cup of sugar or an egg or something like that? And we were like, well, yeah, yeah, sure. Come on in. We're, we're getting ready to leave. She's like, oh, what's wrong? You know, and I my husband said, well, our, you know, Lewis is sick and, and he's got a fever. We need to take him to the emergency room. And she said, oh, she says, well, can I pray over him? And we were like, yeah, sure. Go for it. You know, whatever. <laughs> you know, we didn't Just hurry him. up. We got to go. Yeah, and she <laughs> sat down on the couch and she had him come lay down in her lap. And she started speaking in tongues and rubbing his ear and just, just rubbing his ear, rubbing his ear speaking in tongues and she was and some of it was cajun because i could pick that out the french but then there was other stuff she was saying was like i don't know where the hell that came from yeah and she was you know she did this for like three or four minutes and my husband and i just kind of like look at each other like what is going on around here and uh and after a few minutes she got up and she says okay and uh and she took her whatever it was she came to bar and she left before she got into her place next door, he was up and bouncing off the walls. Perfectly fine. No fever, no nothing, no earache. Perfectly normal. And we were both looking at each other going, okay, I guess he just got healed. You know? Yeah. <laughs> the first time I'd ever seen anything like that. My husband had seen it a few times um, before, you know, before we got together. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, so it was just, it was one of those things. It was like, oh, okay, well, I guess that really does happen. <laughs> you know, and I really learned the power of our healing. I mean, I'm, I do Reiki. So 
Well, yeah. I really learned that though. What got me interested in Reiki was I saw an old, old video of Greg Braden, you know, with <laughs> with his mullet, his long yeah. mullet, and he was in, I believe it was Thailand, and they were there was a woman that had cancer. She had a tumor in her in her stomach, or it was in her pancreas, and this healer was going to do bloodless surgery on her and wow. he gave this full demonstrate he, the greg braden gave this full demonstration on how focusing on shrinking the tumor how that can work how it can heal and make it go away and i'm watching it go yeah sure i had cancer dude sure yeah. <laughs> if that would have worked it would have worked for me well i didn't know what was going on the people standing around this woman this doctor was like acting like he was cutting on her and stuff but he was just using his fingers there was no knives no nothing yeah and these women were standing around him and they were going smaller 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 you they were showing it in ultrasound and that tumor was doing this. Oh yeah. I, since then I have Eventually seen it went yeah. away. Yeah. So I went, uh yeah, there's a lot more to healing than taking a dang pill and going to a doctor. Yeah. So this is what I use to ground myself. I will sit and do card readings and this thing is in my lap. <laughs> the selenite. Selenite. I was going to ask you. It charges. It will charge your crystals. It'll charge your cards. It'll suck negative energy I, out. I have it's one. So wonderful. And it's so soft. This mine split. This was a full round tower, but it's split in half. So, but it. I think it might be one of these two. I'm not sure. Yeah. But I've got. Probably not the clear one. Yeah, I think that's it's really very cool. cloudy. Yeah, but I have but it's striated. One. It's always striated, so it's always got the lines in it. Yeah, you can kind of see the lines in it. Mm -hmm. I bet that's yeah. that could be. That might be, or maybe it's in the other jar. I don't know. You can get these on Amazon. Really inexpensive. I think this was under ten dollars, and it's heavy. Yeah, here's one here that's. Got all it's crazy for me to buy uh, crystal and stuff on Amazon. And they have the gem show here every year. It's kind of in a wholesale license. But I can't always get there. I don't have a car, first off. I, like you were using Lyft the other day. Yeah, I've been using Lyft almost every day since Halloween. I don't have I need I to buy a stock in the company. I've a car in five years. And I'm constantly getting these letters. Your warranty's about up. You need a new warranty on your car. So I'll call them and say, what car? <laughs> I like, huh? I'm like, quit sending me this crap. I don't own a car. Get me off your list. Yeah. Well, you don't have to be mean about it. And I'm like, you don't have to harass me either. <laughs> Save the stamp. That's it. That's it. You keep selenite in your medicine pouch. That's yeah, because if you oh, there you go with other crystals, it's going to charge up all those other crystals too. So it's perfect for okay. a medicine pouch. Perfect for a medicine. Pouch. I probably need to get one that I keep in my medicine drawer with all my medications. You, Rachel, you didn't tell me you saw a peregrine falcon on Monday. You told me about the hawk. Wow, falcons are amazing. We have them here too. Arizona in Tucson I've got so much wildlife it's crazy yeah but now I have this little kitty cat that the universe had someone dump on me that I am so grateful to have I don't have very much wildlife again yeah. that kind of went away yeah. but he's having a cat is such a love that I'm glad I have her plus I have this problem with mice getting into my grow room uh-huh and she so I catch clear. them in a live trap and I take them outside to release them. Well, she's gotten wise to that. So she'll hide where I go to release them. And that when that mouse is pew out of that trap, she's pew 
mm, right after the mouse and she eats them. Yep, there you go. So I getting it's less and less now of mice all the time. So today I gave her a big <laughs> attaboy and gave her a whole can of cat food. She's just half grown. She's a little kitty. She ate it all. Her tummy was so tight. <laughs> I can imagine. I miss having a cat. We have two dogs, but um, my oh. son's dog and my brother's dog. And like I said, I'm surrounded by testosterone. It's, <laughs> yeah. I'm the only female in the house. Um, yeah, that's kind of like my cat, Willow. He's the only yeah. male. But yeah. he lets you know he's the boss. See he's this. He walks like this. Yeah. Like he's a bodybuilder. And, and he's looking all the side. And anywhere I go, he has to go in front of me. So he's I call him my body. He's my elemental. So he's my bodyguard. He's always with me. Um, as a matter of fact, is he there? Yeah, he's sleeping on a pillow over there on my bed. He's always here. Always. He weighs 27 pounds, by the way. My cat that I had for 17 years weighed, he was 20 plus pounds. He was a big old orange and white tabby cat, you know. Yeah, these, um, these guys are half Maine Coon. Oh, so yeah. They, they, have, they get they huge. Don't, they're yeah. wonderful. They're just gentle giants. They're the sweetest cats. Oh, I will always have a Maine Coon. Oh, they're great cats. They think they act more like dogs, too. Willow, I order a pizza, and when the pizza guy delivers it, Willow would come to, with me to the door. Oh, who's here? Just like a dog does. And then roll over on his back. Pet my tummy. Pet my tummy. That's my yeah. cat. Yeah. <laughs> Some cats are very, very dog. He's very, very dog into getting the attention and the loving and the and the whatnot. Well, and he'll only do that though with certain people. He doesn't always do it with everybody. So yeah. I pay attention. If Willow doesn't like you, I don't like you. I I I I, I like you, but I'll yeah, I'll hold you off. Yeah. Yeah. If he doesn't like you. But usually I've already re I've read you and figured out where I stand in our in our relationship way before i pay attention to what my cat does or says yeah i can this is part of my empath um i have been so bombarded with negative people and negative male energy mm -hmm. in my life that i can be walking down the street and a man can be i can be at one block and a man can be at another end of the block and we're walking towards each other before i get like maybe 10 steps, I will know whether I should cross the street or not. Yeah. And I'll cross the street. I'll jaywalk to cross the street. I'll be obvious about it. I don't care. It's, but hey, I go with it. You know, I mean, you're given those feelings for a reason. You know, I listen to them. said something yesterday that I kind of, as I was listening to it today, I listened to my live from yesterday. That maybe you shouldn't put it quite that way. But I really don't believe in victimhood. I do for children and animals because they're innocent. Yeah. Adults, you're not a victim. You made a choice that put you in that situation. You made a, a definite choice. So if you're at a bar or somewhere, so you go out to eat and you can't, your car breaks down and you need help. Do you walk to get help? By yourself in the dark as a woman? No. Or do you wait with your car? Yeah, no, I stay with my car and you the stay doors. With your damn car. You never go to a second location. You never let anybody take you to a second location that you yep. don't know. So it's that choice that you make that puts you in danger yeah. and makes something happen to you. It's, and, those are the most learning lessons is from well, the wrong decisions. <laughs> you know, I mean, there are well, a lot I have a hard time with adults that are constantly in this victimhood, this, this, you know, well, I got this treated that way. So, you know, I deserve better. No, we've all had a hard life. Yeah. It's not supposed to be easy. Otherwise we wouldn't be here. Because this is a, a school. The earth is a learning space. We come yeah. here as spirit, as our higher self. We come here to see what it's like to have a free will and what that means to human, to be human. Yeah. 
it's complicated as hell, ain't it? <laughs> Why do you think them ETs are going? I don't want to go down there. I, I, uh, that place is too hard for me. <laughs> Crazy people down there. Them people ain't civilized. It's hard. <laughs> Well, I thank you guys so much. This Sherry, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, we can talk all the time. Yeah. I feel like we could. Um, we do, yeah. I mean, you know, like we I, have another sister over. I have a tendency to get chatty. That's me. I do too. I so, can talk, hey, talk, that's talk. why we work. Maybe we that's ought to true. do, maybe we ought to do some, something like uh, Nasty Women Turn or the Soul Sisters do and do it together. <laughs> There you go. That might be something to do one time. I ain't gonna be a blast, you know. I'm I've been so happy today that I just sent out a bunch of stuff. I just sent out some suggestions in Instagram to all these people. And went, I'm starting this new thing called the Light Workers Round Table. And would you there like you to go. come and join me? And I like, like, like oh, I love it. it. Oh, wonderful. Sure. Yeah. I'm like, gosh, that was easy. <laughs> Yeah, I've got the whole month of, of April planned. Cool. Every Thursday. That's great. I'm working on May now. So, yeah, it's pretty exciting. I got to get the guys in here, though. We got to get Scott and Danny and, you know. You ought to uh, talk to Mark. Mark and, and Whisper. Yes. Kevin. He's wonderful. I love him. And uh, Oh, Spirit Whisper, of course Deb I love him. Because got... he and I, I would like to be on with him and Debbie because I do what they do with animals i'm an animal oh, communicator cool. they talk to me yeah. that's part of my clairvoyance see when i say i hear things if you're cutting a tree down and i'm anywhere close i hear the tree screaming in pain i can't wow. be near it yeah and that goes for trimming trees too because you're cutting their arms off so i i hear them yeah. Um, it's really and most weird. people don't think of them that way. It's just a tree. You know, they don't. It's just a plant. Yeah. Well, you know what? My of... just a plant saved my life. My just a plant that I grow. <laughs> you know, plants. Hey, I'm excited, man. It's, uh, when we moved from the old place, I took uh, a bunch of cuttings off the rose bush that my mother had planted oh. for me when I moved back. To, yes. To yeah. And they all shriveled up and died none of them survived i thought and then the other morning when i went outside for my morning coffee and cigarette and i saw that one of my bonsai tree seeds had sprouted to three months i repotted them a week ago i repotted them in new dirt in a bigger pot and one of them i was doing a happy dance i mean i even posted pictures on it's you great. did. I saw him on Instagram. <laughs> well, I was so excited. It was like, finally, something's coming out of the seed. And then I noticed that there was one little green shoot coming out of the pot of my mom's rose bushes, cuttings that I had taken them. So, the so I took it die. and I repotted it in another small pot with fresh dirt. And then the next day, my son calls me work. He says, how many leaves was on that? I say, it was just the one leaf coming off the top. He says, Mona, there's three leaves on there today. I said, you're crazy. And he said, no, there are three leaves on this rose and another sprout coming off the side of the rose bush. And I was like, oh, my goodness. And so I went when I saw him and I sat back and I just said, okay, Mom, you're in charge of the plants. You're the ones that can grow stuff, not me. I kill them if I touch them. So it was like, you take over. You deal with it. Awesome. You deal with the plants, and now I've got the bonsai seed tree going, and I got the rose bush growing, and my spider plant is exploding everywhere. And you know, spider plants are fun, they grow outside here. Yeah, yeah, spider plants and asparagus ferns grow outside here. Yeah, well, I yeah. bought a spider plant at, at the grocery store, they yeah, had a I bunch of spider them, plants, and I thought, oh, cool, I'll get one of those. And, it's got so many plants inside the pot. It's like, I got to get in there and take some of them out. And we <laughs> it's, and then I went and bought a new rose bush and put it, which is just sticks for right now, but um, put it in the big pot and potted it. So wait to see if something happens with that. Yeah, I've been thinking about getting a rose bush. It's been a while since I've had one. I love roses um, and they're my birth flower. No, my mother loved uh, angel face rose was her favorite. That's the lavender. 
Rose? I just Jackson like Rose's Angel fairy. Fist was her favorite. I don't, so I don't, he's now growing all over the place. Favorite. Yeah. I don't think I have a favorite. I just like roses. I like this. Roses salt. do really well here. It's amazing. It is so damned hot here, but roses love it. They yeah. love it here. But they get powdery mildew really easy, which is odd yeah. here. Because you'd think that that heat would, what? That would dry off. Yeah. But it doesn't. Mm -mm. So you can't, when you get powdery mildew is if you water like just before dark. And the plants don't get a chance to dry out before it gets dark. You'll get for sure powdery mildew. Yep. So, well, I thank everybody thank for coming. Again. I had thank so you much fun. So much. Um, I my usual spiel. Be kind to everybody you come across. But most of all, be kind to yourself. That's it. That's it. I love you. And smile. You never know when someone needs a smile. And you know, even if you got your mask on and they can't see your smile, you can, they can smile see you smile with your eyes. They can see you smile. You sure I can. Mean, yeah. You don't just smile here. Mm -mm, you no, smile. there's actually more muscles involved in frowning than there is in smiling. That's right. So it takes more That's energy right. to be a grump than it does to choose to be happy. Happy. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye, everybody. Bye.